starting streaming now okay and then back here we're live oh my god I just yawned hi everyone we are going live again today we've had some audio issues uh, we've had a couple of days of strange technical issues but the key <laughs> <laughs> to all creative pursuits and it's technical know-how no is overcoming issues when they arise yes when things break you just you just fix let them. it go and you carry on yeah so here we are and you persevere we persevere true grit yeah happening here yeah uh so, so i am diana Bird. and i'm anthony epps we are here to talk to you today about the story behind the photograph. Yes. And I think uh, one of the one of the things that's so interesting about um, other people's creative outlets, their photographs, you know, is how they go about it and what the mindset they were in, their thinking. Um, and I think we can all learn so much from hearing about how someone created something and it can give us ideas for our own photography and our own creative pursuits. So, take us, Anthony, to Istanbul. Okay, this is the shot I want to talk about. Um, this was during, this was last April. This is a very, fairly recent shot for me, I mean, last April. So, it's still, um, the shoot is very fresh in my mind. And it's, in April, in Istanbul, it is the Tulip Festival, actually all over Turkey, because tulips, actually, their origin is Turkey. It's not... It's Turkey not, and sort of the, the, the Asia, re, southern the region, Asia. Yeah, it's, it's not Europe. It's not, it's not the Netherlands. They just, um, they just traded them. Mm. Um, but the tulip, the actual flower, is indigenous to Turkey and the surrounding areas. And the Turks... Turkish people, they know it. They love the, the they love the tulips, and they celebrate them by planting up to 30 million in Istanbul alone. So every sidewalk, um, every park, every corner has got some um, well tended beautiful tulip. Beautiful displays. And yeah. It's beautiful. And there's hundreds of different varieties of tulips, you know, and um, they've got these really intense colors. Um, so I am with a group of people, and we're we are um, we are in the park. Uh, let me just uh, here. Here we go. We are Hi in the everyone. we are in the park in Istanbul. You need to turn that off. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to check that the audio is working. It's working. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Tanya. Lovely to see you. I'm glad you can tune in. Thank you, Calgary. Tanya. Thank you, Tanya. I don't know if you saw our silent one earlier on. So sorry. You might have saw it but didn't hear it. Anyway, so <laughs> here I am. I'm in the park. I'm with a group of uh, students for my in my Istanbul workshop, and we go to this park. I heard so much about it. It's like you got to see this park. It's the most beautiful tulip display in all of Istanbul. I couldn't wait to get there, and I got there, and wham! I was completely overwhelmed by how beautiful it was. And you know, there's dozens of people in the park. It was a gray day. It was starting to drizzle, and Everybody and the colours are still very vibrant. Aren't oh they? yeah, I mean yeah, I mean you can see here like, you know, soft light doesn't harm intense colours at all. It actually makes it look really quite beautiful. Um, but the overwhelm from, oh let me, let me just say everybody was standing up, walking around, admiring the flowers, and taking snapshots. And my group spread out. Said I said go spread out. You know let's let's see what you can come up with um, while we're here for the next hour and a half and I went around and I started taking these shots you know you take the from the top shots and focusing on the color trying to compose something nicely with the with the color right I'm not trying to say a lot just trying to get a, a good mix of color in there the greens the reds the yellows and it was working but after a couple minutes honestly I, I got a bit bored I said, okay, so I'm going to try to do something a bit different, you know. So I isolated these yellow ones, and that didn't come out too well. Um, then I got close. I said, but this is not, this is not a special shot for me either. As an artist, I wanted to really try to do something that nobody else would think about in the park, you know, something that was truly kind of 
my vision. And I knew it had to be, you know, I was switching lenses. I got I had three lenses, and I was switching between two as the the 100 and the and 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 the 50. And I was going back and forth between these lenses. And I know when I do that, I know I'm, my position's not right. Yeah, because I'm relying on the focal length to like make it make it work, but it wasn't really working for me. And so I put the um, what lens did I end up putting on here? I think I believe that I put my 100 millimeter on there. I'll check that in a minute. And I thought, well, what are, what are the flowers going to look like at a lower angle? Everybody's shooting top down. What if I got really low? So I got, you know, I started to get closer to the flowers, actually, you know, squatting down and shooting. And then as I got down lower, I, it was revealed to me the underneath the flowers. And I was like, wow, that's that looks really nice. And there was this whole world going on that... Um, was not apparent when you were walking, you know, many feet up. So I started to, you know, I had a, a shallow aperture and I thought I'm going to make the most of these colors. And surprisingly, they had just as beautiful shapes from underneath. If not more. Almost, more, almost more geometric underneath than mm -hmm. from above, right? Mm -hmm. And the colors were just surreal. It was absolutely beautiful. So I started to shoot it from underneath. And I, and I did this series here. Let me just show you here. I did this series here, right, of these images here from underneath, and I thought this worked out really well. I, I was doing the overexposure mostly because I wanted to make my colors a bit more washed out, a bit more pastel-y looking, mm. so I was overexposing. It was really, you know, it's quite shady under there too because, you know, the, the light's being blocked by the flower, so I was overcompensating for that and trying to get more of uh, light colors and not so rich yeah and then I got up again and I did some I isolated some flowers but then you can see I I isolated some flowers and but then I went underneath again and I did this series here and I, I was just really intrigued by the flowers from underneath I mean look at that green look at those colors oh, I think it was that's one of the most prettiest greens I've seen in a long time mm. it almost reminds me like of a like a, a sea green. Yeah. You know, like, like a something, mossy green. Like something you would pull out of the sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just beautiful colors from underneath. And more interesting shapes, I thought. You know, because the flowers are nice from above. I mean, like, look here. All right? They're, they're nice from above, right? But when you when I got close underneath, these shapes just... Like, this is, this is a nice flower, right? Very yeah. common tulip. But from underneath, my goodness, they just took on a whole nother dimensionality mm. and it was really really quite uh, satisfying for me yeah there's something kind of otherworldly about it because it's not your traditional view yeah you know so I think this is a good lesson on how you come upon a scene and how your position can really change your perspective on 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 a scene you're in you know just just coming down and dropping down i was actually on my elbow shooting you know in a, in a light drizzle i got a little bit um um damp, what, damp but yeah you know it was worth it it wasn't it wasn't was it wasn't testing my physical abilities or anything it was just <laughs> it was just trying to find a, a a new angle like like the mouse eye view of of the flowers i mean imagine you're a little mouse walking around in this in this place um or a cat because there's no mice in Istanbul because there's so many cats. <laughs> but, you know, this is what your world would look like, more or less. I love how, let's go back to the shot, how it just totally fills the frame, that you're in it, you're in the flowers, you are you almost can smell them and feel them and then sensations of them. Um, and it's gorgeous. Yeah, so this is the shot pretty much straight out of camera. And then this is the color work I did with it. So I'm not so crazy about the full color work, I have to admit. I I don't like images that look processed. So I would probably want to see it in between those two. Like I, I a, appreciate a, bit, a, little bit a little less. bit of work. Yeah. yeah. It, it just looks a little bit artificial and I like... It's a lot cooler Yeah. and it's a lot more green, but this green is divine. I love that greenish mm. blue. You know, instead of instead of the previous one where you have a, a yellowish green, because you know green 
is the color that mixes with the most other colors than any other color. Did I say that right? Uh, I did. You can mix right. green with blues, with reds, with yellows, and you will get a very distinct looking green. Uh, so green is the color that mixes with the most colors. Yeah? It's the most yeah. diverse color, believe it or not. So here we have a, a yellowish green, right? Yeah. And then what I did is I, I made it a bluish green and I made it darker. You could say I added a lot of blue to this. This was done with a split tone. And I just think it makes the flowers make more vibrant. Mm. I mean, look what it, the blue did with the red here. I mean, instead of being washed out kind of pink, which I liked and I exposed for, but as I started working on it, I started playing with the color and I really liked the reds I got and how those reds matched up with the with the greens and it was what what that was was a was a uh, adding blue to those colors almost like a tealish kind of blue right so is that the only thing you did was split tone blue um you see this is this is where you can tell that you I want me to you about. want me to come in here and Exactly. Well, did look, I did, a, I did a, I did a, I did a, I did a blue in the highlights and a purple, mm. and uh, what's well, actually a really deep purple. That's really strong. So if I turn that off, it's like this. But I did some other color work, so that doesn't really. I take take off the HSL and that. Yeah. So I, I did some pretty advanced color work to get with hit with this. I can't just turn off one module and show you. I'd have to go through the whole process, right? But it was. If I, I think you would like it more if I went like this, Ty. If I went like this and Ooh. just like that, no, that's a bit too yellow for me. Yeah, see, so I can't, I can't just mess with one module because it's, it's all. This was interconnected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all interconnected. I have to say, I do like it, and I prefer it to straight out of camera. But it's just a little bit. It's, I suppose, like it's, it looks like a painting, which is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. Um. What if I up the exposure a bit? I'm, I'm no? really into like. We reality. I like the real beauty of reality. Yeah, she does. She really, do, really does. Do we have any comments? Um, Tanya says far more interesting from ground level. Yes, Good. it is. Yeah. You know, it's not an original idea, Tanya. I mean, I didn't make up the idea of shooting uh, flowers at ground level. I was just in the perfect uh, situation where I, you know, that I thought. That thought came to me because of uh, a student of mine had shot flowers at the uh, the, the Tower of London uh, when they when they had the uh, the roses. What, what was they it? were giant metal poppies. It was like giant metal them. poppies, and they were coming off the building and covering the lawn. Yeah. And she had done a shot. You know, she just set her camera on the ground from underneath and got all the you know the metal poppies going around the, the, the stems and it was a beautiful shot mm. and when I was down on my knees I mean on my elbows I thought of that shot mm. I may probably maybe that was my influence you know one of my student shots from a decade earlier I remembered that um, because it was such an impactful shot for me and mm. you know I was trying to emulate that feeling I think that's um, I mean we've talked about this before about how to get away from the obvious shot that everyone else is taking and um there's a really lovely story victoria corin who's a writer talks about some advice that her writer father gave her and he said when you're thinking about writing about a subject the first thing you think of the first thought you have will be what everybody has so don't write that the second idea you have about that subject will be what the clever people say but the third idea, when you really dug deep and thought into that subject, that will be your very own unique thought and idea. That'll be the artistic approach. Yeah, and I think that's the same with photography, that yes, you d it does take time sometimes, as you saw from all of Anthony's different images, you've got the really obvious, straightforward shots, he's working the scene, he's trying to compose, he's using his lines and using his colour and isolating subjects and trying to build composition but sometimes then you just keep going and digging and looking for something else and looking for something else and then you yeah. get something that is that is a little bit more special a little bit more unique a little a bit, bit more, more artistic a bit more personal personal a bit more personal you, yeah you know and actually i would never actually tell anthony to change his processing for my you know desire i just have different feelings about processing ultimately you do what 
what works and what makes sense and what is you feel really passionate about yeah you know i i there was some i don't know if i should get into this now but there was some really beautiful light like the sun came out and it started shining on these roses i mean my roses, these tulips and um it should have been you know the beautiful light should have given me a really good opportunity to to to, to make another great shot but i found that it was still this was so much for me about the angle and the position more than the light because I had hard light at the end of the end of that uh, time in that area and then I had soft light at the beginning and the light you know the completely different types of light but it, it, the most important thing for me that afternoon was was the position even more so than the light you know it really just changed everything mm. I can show you I've got some more here let me just show you. You come, You say something because I just want to look at something really quick. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I have I, I have some something. I have some more of the. Uh, where are they? Yeah. Um, I right think here. Oh yeah, these I I. Yeah. So I had hard light come thing. out, right? And I went back down under the flowers again, right? I mean, I was up here shooting, and you know, because the beautiful light. Look at the light. The hard light coming in there. It's like, oh, you know, I was done shooting flowers, but the light changed, so. I said, like, oh, i got to get some more with the hard light. And this still, it was so much about the position. I took a couple like that, and I was like, no. Yeah, so I did some down, you know, underneath here. Like this. And then I went up. And I said, like, no, that's not, that's not it. This is about the position. So I went lower and tried to find that good position. And... Mm. And this is where it started to really work for me, here. Of yeah, you know, sun. and you know, with the sun and the flower, yeah, and, you know, the 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 flower occluding the sun like that, really intentional. Yeah. And again, the beautiful shapes and the beautiful colors. Well, thank you, Anthony, for giving us the story behind the image. If anyone has any questions, please pop them in the comments, either now or after our live. Um, we're always available to answer your questions am i still in the frame you are still am i going i you have to i have to do the opposite direction to where i think i'm going sorry yeah um <laughs> and we will be running a fantastic workshop in istanbul again this year we got we had two workshops in istanbul three and um it's probably one three? of the most important All right. um well it's one of the most significant cities in your kind of imagination and artistic life in my repertoire it? of teaching yeah i think istanbul yeah. is um probably my most um inspiring fun city to be in because there's so much to do and so much to see and every walk is just uh um i know it really well and filled if, with if history we were, um, yeah and if we were looking for mystery um it's history, not hard history. to get off the path and find something completely new like yeah. i did last time i found this little you know I took a road led me down an alley up some stairs ended up on top of these buildings with a spectacular view and I was like wow I'm gonna have to remember this place <laughs> well, the GPS is coordinates Istanbul is on seven hills you yeah. get these incredible vistas obviously you have to walk up the hill to get yeah. to the vistas incredible vistas and you've got three C's it's all on three C's so you've got these it's like a built for photography so you've got these amazing ability for vistas then you have the history and the mosques and the food and the busyness and the boats and the so you, weather the weather is yeah amazing you're you know you're walking around and all of a sudden the thick fog just comes in from the bosphorus and then it i think you know leaps away i think a, istanbul leaps, so. covers all genres of photography yeah a and lot of amazing food photography, photography to landscape street photography travel photography portrait photography i mean yeah. there's it's just chock full of locations and and killer coffee when you need it and it's, it's an extraordinary city Antony knows it very well everyone thinks Antony is turkish so he moves to the city Merhaba. seamlessly <laughs> um, <laughs> And um, yeah, it's a it's a wonderful workshop. So we're the oh, end of September, 
end of September, yeah? Ish, approximately. I'll put the link in. But thank you so much for listening to our wonderful little story behind the shot. We've got some other great lies for you this I week. I hope you like the shot. I really like it. I hope it was kind of insightful about how I, you know, the imaginative thought process that goes into creating images that are unique to you. And also, um, Auntie doesn't like me saying this, but I'll say it anyway. Um, I always like to see the kind of not amazing shots that Anthony's taken before he happened upon that were before he created the wonderful shot and I think that's very reassuring you can see all the kind of boring bits I think it's people that under, understand that you know there it is a it is a thought process you know you see the greatest photographers in the world if you look at their proof sheets you know they're going to have a hundred images and then they're going to have that one great shot yeah and it's important for people to know that photography is a process you know, mm -hmm. it's it's a thinking process. Yeah, you know? it's you're, and, you're and going me, through a journey, aren't you? Yeah, and me demonstrating how I'm doing it is, I hope it inspires people um, to, to see book that they can do the same thing. That we recommend all the time. It's called Magnum Tear Sheets, isn't it? M Magnum Contacts. Mon Magnum Contacts. And it's, um, it's a selection of phot photographers, Magnum photographers. And they have published in a book their proof sheets and little stories okay, so and things. Okay, so you have the iconic image that everybody knows, right? Yeah. From a magnet photographer, world famous, you know, change history type of photograph. And they print the whole contact sheet from where that image came from. So you can see the story before and after. Mm. Um, but, not, but not just the story, but also see how the photographer has worked the story you know and yeah. how he actually came upon that shot and there's some he coffee or in there. she he or she yes thank you very much <laughs> um and there's a lot i think is it in that book there's a lovely story by um yona yonan bendixson Jonas Benison, yeah. and he's got this beautiful picture of um from his book satellites and it's satellites and then it's it, some people had found an old satellite in somewhere in the siberia old, yeah siberia yeah. And all of a sudden, all these thousands of butterflies appeared. It's a beautiful shot, but it sat on his proof sheet for years before he noticed it. Because yeah. often, those amazing shots can get lost. They do. They um, do. And it's like one of my favorite all-time images. Mm. I just I look at that, and every and I just like every time I see that image, I think, oh my goodness, I want to be there. Yeah. Every time I see it, I just go. Oh, even if I didn't have a camera, just to walk in that light of that day with the butterflies and the green fields, you know, and then a chunk of satellite sitting there in the middle of Siberia. <laughs> because the Russians would launch their satellites, you know, and unlike the States where it would, you know, fall into the ocean, the, the Russian satellites would land in Siberia. And they would, there's farmers and people who had a whole livelihood of um, scrap metal, getting rare metals out of these satellites and selling them. It's a wonderful book and a great image. I definitely encourage you to check yeah. it out. We'll put a link in there so you can have a look. What a photo project. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. We will be back tomorrow. Any questions, put them in the comments. If you want to join us in Istanbul, uh, send us a message. Join uh, me in Istanbul. It's amazing. And the food. Did I talk about the food? Let's, oh. let's not talk about the food. That's a whole other thing going on. Oh, it's amazing. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.